So this is the time in the onion growth cycle when you really need to be making sure they got plenty of nitrogen, however you want to do that, whatever fertilizer you want to use. What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. It is Friday, January 20th here in South Georgia. Kind of a chilly day out here. I'm just on the verge of going inside and putting on a long sleeve shirt, but I'm gonna try to tough it out at least for this video. So on today's video, We've got our onions here behind us. Need to check on those. Want to show you how those are doing, how they've recovered from the Arctic blast we had several, several weeks ago. Probably need to side dress them, give them a little bit of nitrogen. And then we're going to head on over to the raised bed garden where we got some things that didn't survive the Arctic blast, that didn't come back that great. We're going to try to fill in some gaps there and plant some more stuff in our raised bed garden. Now after the arctic blast these onions behind me here look pretty rough the tops were brown they were kind of laid over i was confident pretty confident that they would recover and they have did lose a few plants but not any major major losses and i didn't really touch these plants or this plot until just a few days ago i wanted to let them kind of naturally recover made sure they had plenty of water but i didn't want to disturb them until they were able to kind of recover start putting on some new green growth now i did come in here about two days ago and finally weed this plot a little bit and it started looking pretty rough so i got in here weeded this still some weeds popping up in there here and there probably need to weed it again in the next few days but it's looking a lot better than it was just a few weeks ago so let's take a little closer look here these first three rows are the ones we planted kind of in early november we got the chianti red variety got dp sweet and timon over there and you can see they look nice and green and healthy again a big turnaround from what they look like right after that arctic blast and on these three rows you can see we've got a few little gaps in there but for the most part we have nice full rows so we did lose a few plants here and there but we've still got plenty of onions in these double rows now these two double rows here where we have the georgia boy and sterling varieties were planted several weeks after those over there and you can see they're a good bit smaller and we had a lot more loss in these two rows than we did over there not quite enough loss to just scratch it and you know plant something else here still got enough plants in there where we can see if we like these two varieties or not but definitely got a lot more gaps along the rows there now back to these first three double rows so these plants are probably not quite as big as they would be had we not had the arctic blast but i like what i'm seeing here the leaves are nice and dark green and they're putting on a lot of new growth getting some nice long leaves here now one question we get a lot during onion growing season is about the tops doing this number right here when they get so long they just kind of start bending falling over a little bit sometimes you'll see them laying on the ground like that right there and people think they need to do something about this they need to maybe trim these or keep them from laying on the ground but you don't need to do anything at all just leave them alone they're fine if you're getting some nice growth like that to the point where they're bending that means you're doing a good job so don't cut these don't mess with them at all just let them grow so compared to other vegetables onions need a lot of nitrogen especially to make those dense heavy green tops that we want to see as these plants grow now usually when i'm growing onions i would side dress them with a nitrogen only fertilizer two sometimes three times during the vegetative phase which is what we're in now but we had our chicken tractor on here a pretty good bit before we planted these onions and i was hoping that would allow me to kind of minimize my nitrogen applications and i think it is so so far we've only fertilized these onions with a pre-plant fertilizer some 855 and we've ran agrothrive through the drip system a few times but really haven't supplemented with heavy nitrogen yet now I don't have any way to test the nitrogen levels in this plot right here to tell us if they've got enough to make it the distance or if they're going to run out of juice here in the next month or so and need a little more. All I can do is kind of just go by feel, go by experience, go by the look of these plants here. And by the look of these plants, I don't think they're going to need a ton of extra nitrogen. So instead of two or three side dressing applications of nitrogen, 
the chickens have made it to where I think we can get by with just one and we're going to do that here in a minute so this is the time in the onion growth cycle when you really need to be making sure they got plenty of nitrogen however you want to do that whatever fertilizer you want to use but once they get established like this putting on new leaves that's when you really want to feed them heavily during this vegetative phase so we've got some nature safe 1300 here which is our preferred nitrogen source and hopefully everybody knows by now fertilizer works a lot better if you bring it to the garden in a dog's bucket got this two quart scoop and we'll use two scoops per double row so we'll go along each side of the double row with a scoop and then scratch it in with a wheel hoe all right all right all right we got them fed and we got them weeded all in one effort there supposed to get some rain tomorrow which will help to start dissolve that organic fertilizer there so we can start feeding these plants now if you recall back to the video we did late last year talking about our top 10 onion growing tips one of those tips was to stop feeding the onions when they start the bulbing phase now we're still a ways off from the bulbing phase on these and we'll be able to easily tell when that happens because the soil will start cracking around those plants we'll start to see that bulb of the onion forming there now one of the things that's always kind of puzzled me a little bit is how do we stop fertilizing these onions when they enter the bulbing phase especially when we got kind of a constant supply of nutrients in the soil with these slow release fertilizers not like i can just come out here when they start bulbing flip a switch and they're no longer getting any nitrogen so I think the whole stop fertilizing and bulbing practice, which is a good practice to have, applies more to fast acting synthetic fertilizers. So once these onion plants start bulbing, we won't want to come out here and give them a good shot of the blue stuff. But with these organic slow release fertilizers, like I said, there's no way to really turn off the switch. I think it's going to be okay. We just wouldn't want to give them any additional fertilizer once they start bulbing. Now over here in the raised bed garden, we've got some stuff that made a comeback after the arctic blast and some stuff that didn't. In this round bed, our chard that we had planted on this half here didn't really make a comeback. We need to scratch that. We'll probably plant something else right there on the next video. Our beets made a pretty good comeback. They're still kicking along. Still a ways to go, but they recovered nicely. I thought our savanna mustard might make a comeback and a few of the plants did but there's not a whole lot there just enough to make you mad pak choy made a little bit of a comeback there we can probably salvage some of that right there for a meal but we're probably going to end up cleaning this out pretty quick and planting potatoes here in the next month and then for our parsnip bed here the established plants we had the ones we planted first most of those made it not a real full row but enough to leave it over here where we had replanted some not enough to keep right there we probably just need to scratch that and plant something else right here so since my first planting of savannah mustard bit the dust for the most part and we've got a row's worth of space open in that parsnip bed i figure well might as well plant some more savannah mustard now would be a good time get some in the ground while it's still cool we can have a lot of good greens going in the spring they'll bolt once it gets hot but we should be able to get several good harvest if we plant some right now and this savannah mustard is usually a variety that i don't recommend direct seeding just because the seeds can be a little bit pricey a lot of the old timers around here for their fall garden they'll just till up a spot get them a pound of mustard seed and just go throw it out there in that tilled soil that's their fall garden you wouldn't want to do that with the savannah mustard seed i usually grow this from transplants in the greenhouse but since we're working with just a small space today we're going to direct seed it because i still got quite a few seeds left in this bag now I'm not going to amend this little space with some of our homemade compost just for a small replanting of mustard like this. Probably wait till the parsnips are done. Mustard will probably be done by then and then we'll amend the whole bed before we plant a warm season vegetable here. So really all I need to do is make a couple little small furrows on both sides of this drip tape that's buried here. 
So there's my tape right there. You can see it. And then just make a little tiny furrow on this side here. And then make another one on that side there. Because we're going to plant this stuff pretty thick. Now that we've got our furrows made, we just need to sprinkle some seeds in there. Not going to get too exact with this. Just kind of lightly sprinkle them in there. I'm not going to plant them maybe as thick as I would plant carrots. But I'm trying to get a seed at least, you know, a couple seeds every inches there. So we got one side of the double row done. Now we'll do this side here. I didn't use hardly any seeds at all for that. I still got a bunch of seeds in here. Oh, spilled some right there. That spot's going to be a little thick, but that'll be all right. Now we're just going to lightly cover these up. We don't want them planted too deep. Pack it in a little bit. And hopefully the rain we get tomorrow isn't too heavy. It doesn't wash away any of these seeds. And they should get up and going pretty quick. So my greens consumption sadly has been quite limited since the Arctic blast. But hopefully this planting of savanna mustard will help us solve that, help us get more greens back into our meal rotation from week to week. These things are usually ready to harvest in just about 30 days. And if we can get some of these days in the low to mid 70s, they should pop and won't be too long before we'll be cutting some good greens. Now I know I wasn't the only one that lost a lot of greens to the Arctic blast. So let me know in the comments below, have you replanted already? You planning on replanting? Are you just waiting for the warm season planting? things to come around or maybe you're in the middle of the northern part of the country and you're thinking about planting some greens pretty soon so i hope you enjoyed the video today and as always you can find links to our affiliate partners in the description below got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts don't forget to go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where we now have our fig trees for sale we've also got our garden blog recipes recommended products hats, shirts all kind of good stuff over there if you did enjoy the video be sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life